Hey guys, today we'll be talking about the uh, viscera of the hemisection. So basically the structure which you are actually appreciating over here, this is the dummy of the uh, hemisection of the head and neck. So initially we'll be starting with its anatomical points and then we'll be learning about its specific parts and then we'll move on to its individual structures. So first of all, we'll learn its uh, 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 anatomical points. So basically this is the viscera or this is the dummy of the hemisection of the head and neck. Uh, the oral cavity lies anteriorly, the nostril lies anteriorly, uh, the skull of the uh, hemisection of this head and neck lies superiorly and this vertebral column lies posteriorly inferiorly and the uh, larynx and pharynx lies inferiorly so this was all about the uh, you know anatomical points of this uh, viscera now we have to learn about its uh, presenting parts uh, so basically this is the nasal cavity this is the nasal cavity uh, this part is the vertebral column this is the vertebral column this one is the oral cavity which consists of two different uh, subdivisions one is vestibule another one is uh, oral cavity proper which will come across a bit later on this is the larynx this is the laryngeal tube basically and just posterior to this larynx you will be able to appreciate the pharynx or pharyngeal tube so this is the pharynx okay this is the heart palate the bony framework this is the heart palate which is situated just over the tongue and this is the soft palate and uh, you can see another uh, you know important uh, bulky muscle this is called as genioglossus muscle so this uh, muscle is basically termed as genioglossus muscle and uh, we can also see the parts of the lips as well so this is all about the uh, presenting parts of this uh, viscera and uh, besides all these structures we can also appreciate some of the uh, you know sinuses like this is the frontal nasal sinus this is the sphenoidal uh, sinus uh, okay, so this was all about the uh, you know superficial uh, parts of this uh, viscera. Now let us move on to the individual parts of this viscera. Now this is the nasal cavity. So basically the structure that you are actually appreciating over here, this is the nasal cavity. And now we have to learn its extension as well. Now uh, this is the uh, nostril. The, there is the opening through which we can actually inspire the air in or at the same time we can expire the air out. So this uh, opening is called as nostril or it's also termed as the anterior nasal corona through which we can take the breath in at the same time breathe out so uh, this uh, the, from the from the anterior nasal corner up to the posterior nasal corner so this depression that you can appreciate over here which i'm actually indicating through my pen this uh, depression it is actually termed as the posterior nasal corner so the extension of the nasal cavity is from the anterior nasal corner up to the posterior nasal corner and the structure that you are actually seeing over here this is uh, going to indicate the lateral nasal wall so this is the lateral nasal wall and uh, we have to also learn about its uh, features of the lateral nasal wall for example you can appreciate some bony elevations over here these are shelf like bony elevations so they are basically three numbers so these shelf, shelf like bony elevations they are called as the nasal corner so this is the inferior nasal corner this is the conca this is the middle nasal uh, nasal uh, conca and this is the superior nasal conca so these are the these are nothing but the elevations of the bony structure now how will you be able to count the numbers of the uh, nasal conca or, or how will you be able to specifically trace the nasal conca so there is a traditional rule by which we actually can easily uh, understand and also trace the uh, conca like we have to move from down to above uh, sequence to to be able to identify the uh, respective uh, concas like uh, above the level of the heart palate the conca that we will be able to get to see is called as inferior nasal conca it's a separate bone okay it's not the part of any uh, other bone so it's the uh, inferior nasal conca which is situated just above the level of the heart palate and this is the middle conca or middle nasal conca okay and this is the superior nasal conca okay this is the superior nasal conca so between the two concas we can easily appreciate a groove like structure so basically this is the groove these are the groups okay these are the groups where we'll get to see the opening of the paranasal sinuses okay like uh, uh, the another thing that we have to understand that corresponding paranasal uh, sinuses i mean to say for corresponding uh, nasal uh, meters external meters lie beneath the corresponding the nasal conca that means if it is the inferior nasal conca beneath it will be able to get to see the inferior nasal meatus okay simultaneously if it is the middle nasal conca beneath it will be able to get to see the middle nasal uh, meatus uh, if it is the superior uh, nasal conca beneath it will be able to get to see the uh, superior nasal uh, meatus okay now what is the importance or what are the importance of this meatus basically uh, in the meatus we will get to see the openings of the different kinds of sinuses for example if i tell you more specifically in the middle meatus we will get to see the openings of the maxillary uh, paranasal sinus as well as frontal paranasal sinus and anterior and uh, uh, middle paranasal sinuses of the ethmoidal uh, paranasal sinuses okay 
uh, they will be opening uh, these paranasal sinuses like anterior paranasal sinus like anterior paranasal sinuses of the uh, sphenoid paranasal sinus middle paranasal sinuses of the sphenoid paranasal sinuses frontal uh, paranasal sinus and maxillary paranasal sinuses they will be opening in the hiatus semilunaris of this uh, middle meatus okay so simultaneously uh, uh, just beneath the uh, inferior nasal concha this is uh, termed as the uh, this roof life structure this is termed as the inferior nasal uh, meatus over here will not get will not be able to get to see any kind of opening of any paranasal sinuses rather will be able to get to see the opening of the nasolacrimal duct so nasolacrimal duct will be opening uh, through this channel or through this groove okay now superior uh, nasal uh, meatus this is the ma superior nasal meatus so in the superior nasal meatus will be able to get to see the opening of the posterior part or the posterior pair of the ethmoidal uh, air sinus okay and in the supreme meatus so let's just suppose this is our supreme meatus okay supreme meatus uh, in the supreme meatus will be get able to get to see the opening of sphenoidal air sinus so sphenoidal air sinus will be opening over here so these are the you know uh, this is all about the lat features of the lateral nasal wall okay now uh, as i've already mentioned earlier that this is the uh, posterior nasal concha so from the anterior nasal concha up to the posterior nasal concha this uh, is the uh, extension of the lateral nasal wall okay now if we go beyond this extension then we'll be able to get to see the extension of the pharynx okay let's just suppose this is the uh, from that is from the posterior nasal concha our journey of the pharynx will kick off that means uh, this uh, from here to here this indicates the pharyngeal tube this indicate the pharyngeal uh, tube and this pharynx has got basically three different parts okay how many parts are there in the pharynx basically there are three different parts of the pharynx okay uh, first one is nasopharynx second one is oropharynx and the third one is uh, laryngopharynx okay so oropharynx the first one is nasopharynx so nasopharynx uh, starts nasopharynx starts from the posterior nasal corner up to the lower border of the soft palate so if it is if it is the soft palate let us suppose this is our soft palate because it's a fleshy like structure okay uh, if it is the soft it is the if it is the lower border of the soft palate then from the nasal from the posterior nasal concha up to the lower border of the soft palate this area this area is going to indicate the presence of nasopharynx so this is our nasopharynx from the lower border of the soft palate up to the upper border of the epiglottis so this is our epiglottis okay from the lower border of the soft palate up to the upper border of the epiglottis this portion this portion is known as oropharynx okay and from the upper border of the uh, from the upper border of the uh, epiglottis up to the uh, lower border of the cricoid cartilage so basically this is our cricoid cartilage okay this is our cricoid cartilage this area is basically uh, called as cricoid cartilage this is the more specifically speaking this is the posterior lamina of the cricoid cartilage so this is the lower border of the cricoid cartilage so from the upper border of the epiglottis up to the lower border of the cricoid uh, cartilage we'll be able to get to see uh, laryngopharynx so basically larynx and pharynx are collectively called as laryngopharynx and this is uh, uh, the, the thyroid cartilage so thyroid cartilage uh, will be present anteriorly and posterior to the thyroid cartilage there will be the presence of the posterior lamina of the cricoid cartilage and this is the anterior arch of the cricoid cartilage so this is uh, this is called anterior arch of the cricoid cartilage so basically thyroid cartilage is deficient posteriorly so it doesn't uh, become continuous uh, with each other i mean th thyroid cartilage has got two different lobes okay both the lobes uh, will no longer be uh, becoming continuous uh, with each other posteriorly so it will become deficient posteriorly but this cricoid cartilage is almost like ring in structure that means its shape is ring okay it is ring shaped so it uh, it uh, will uh, encircle and enclose the whole laryngeal tube so it will also uh, become continuous with each other posteriorly so this is the anterior lamina of the cricoid cartilage and this is the posterior uh, so this big open this is the anterior arch of the cricoid cartilage and this is the posterior lamina of the cricoid cartilage and if we talk about the vertebral extension uh, vertebral extension of the uh, 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 oropharynx and uh, so big open if we talk about the vertebral extension of the uh, laryngopharynx then we have to say uh, the laryngopharynx terminates at the lower border of the cervical sixth vertebra okay now we have to also understand and learn how to count the numbers of the vertebra okay this is the first cervical vertebra because the first cervical vertebra does not have any body so uh, this is the first cervical vertebra which is devoid of the body and this is the second cervical vertebra so basically this elongated structure that you can appreciate over here this is or nothing but the odontoid process this is nothing but the odontoid process so this is the first cervical vertebra this is the second cervical vertebra third fourth fifth sixth so this is the sixth cervical vertebra and this is the seventh cervical vertebra as well so what we have already told earlier that uh, the laryngopharynx terminates at the lower border of the sixth cervical vertebra so if it is the lower if it is the sixth cervical vertebra then its lower border will be indicating like this 
the, uh, then its lower border will be indicating uh, somewhere at uh, this region and this will be marking the uh, termination of the laryngeal uh, uh, this will be marking the termination of the uh, laryngeal pharynx okay now this was all about the laryngeal pharynx okay now what will be the content of this uh, oropharynx and nasopharynx in the nasopharynx of course there is no possibility of the regurgitation of the food particles normally under normal physiological circumstances okay so normally the uh, nasopharynx will be containing only air but the oropharynx uh, of course it will be uh, you know uh, closer to the oral cavity so it will uh, lodge both uh, food particles at the same time it will also lodge air so the content of oropharynx will be both air and food particle now this is the genioglossus muscle which forms the bulk uh, of the uh, tongue so though this genioglossus muscle is also called a safety muscle of the tongue basically it is the extrinsic muscle of the tongue because we have already learned earlier that the muscles of the tongue can be divided into two different parts one is extrinsic muscle another one is intrinsic muscle so uh, this uh, genioglossus muscle is going to be falling under the classification of the extrinsic muscle and this genioglossus muscle always uh, uh, you know maintains a good protrusion of the tip of the tongue so it also causes the you know, protrusion of the tip of the tongue at the same time it prevents the backward falling of the tongue so as uh, this muscle prevents the backward falling of the tongue so there is uh, no possibility of the obstruction of the respiration during the normal physiological activity due to which uh, we can you know take the respiration or we can uh, do the respiration uh, normally so that is the major reason why uh, this uh, is called the safety muscle so had there been no genial process muscle then uh, the tongue would have directly you know gone over the, uh, the the tongue would have directly gone over the larynx and uh, it would uh, de definitely cause the obstruction of the respiration tract of the respiratory tract and this would definitely kill the patient or kill the individual so as it uh, so as this muscle prevents the backward falling of the tongue over the respiratory tract so that's the major reason why it helps in the uh, normal ongoing of the respiration and that is the major reason why it's also called as a safety muscle anyways now let us just understand the you know, parts of the oral cavity so this is the oral cavity actually it consists of two different parts this one is vestibule so this is this is called vestibule okay it starts from the lips then lateral cheeks up to the teeth and gum so this is the teeth and this is the gum okay so this portion is called vestibule okay and just uh, posterior to the vestibule that means uh, uh, be, uh, behind the teeth okay behind the teeth uh, up to the you know uvula this area is called as uh, oral cavity proper so this is the oral cavity proper okay okay fine now let us also understand the, uh, uh, the uh, let us also understand the you know cartilages of this uh, uh, of this structure uh, uh, one thing that i've already missed that is the uh, sinuses this is the frontal nasal sinus and this is the uh, spinodal uh, air sinus okay now frontal nasal sinus and ethmoidal air, uh, nasal sinus uh, the, what will be the major function of this air sinus so basically there is the there are three different uh, you know major functions of this air sinus normally the air sinus contain air what is air sinus or what is paranasal air sinus paranasal air sinus are nothing but the air containing bony spaces which are present within the skull and uh, which are lined by the respiratory epithelium which means pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium cell they help in the lightening of the bone that means they help uh, in the reduction of the uh, weight of the skull and they help in the resonance of the voice at the same time they cause the humidification of the air now what will be the lining epithelium of this nasal cavity so basically uh, majority of the portion of the nasal cavity will be lined by the respiratory epithelium which is nothing but the pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium cell and the vestibule the area which is closer to the vestibule this area will be lined by the non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium cell and the area where the olfaction uh, which is re which is held responsible for the olfactory activities like uh, this the roof part and uh, this roof part is held uh, is held responsible for the olfactory activity so this will be lined by the bipolar olfactory cell or more specifically speaking bipolar olfactory epithelium cells okay and uh, now the tongue of course the lining epithelium of the tongue is uh, non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium cell uh, so uh, so this is all about uh, the uh, hemisection another thing that i have to uh, you know indicate is that this portion this is the this is called shela tarsica this concave structure this is known as shela tarsica where will where there will be the situation of this pituitary gland so this uh, you know circular reddish uh, structure is uh, going to you know represent the presence of the pituitary gland okay and this concavity indicates the shela tarsica and uh, we have uh, we have to also learn about the uh, uh, welder's lymphatic ring so welder's lymphatic ring uh, consists of four different uh, you know tonsils of four different lymphatic structures uh, one of them is uh, uh, one of them is uh, in a tibial tonsil okay so basically this elevated area this elevated area uh, this elevation uh, this elevated area which is formed by the 
fold of the mucus okay uh, it is known as uh, tubal uh, eminence or bigger pardon this is known as tubal elevation okay so the uh, tubal elevation and uh, uh, within this tubal elevation there will be the presence of the tubal tonsil and this is the nasopharyngeal tonsil which will be situated posterior superiorly okay posterior superior to this uh, tubal uh, tonsil or tubal uh, you know elevation so this is the nasopharyngeal tonsil this is the tubal uh, uh, tubal elevation uh, within which we will be able to get to see the uh, tubal uh, tonsil and uh, and uh, this is the uh, you know this is the palatine tonsil uh, this is the palatine tonsil it is basically situated in the palatine uh, bed okay or uh, tonsillar bed i should be saying uh, tonsillar bed so within the tonsillar bed we will be able to get to see the palatine tonsil and this will be uh, the, on the posterior aspect of the tongue there will be the situation of the lingual tonsil okay now this uh, these four different tonsils uh, will be end, will be ending up making the formation of the welder's lymphatic uh, structure or, or more, more truly speaking welder's lymphatic ring now this was all about the uh, uh, this was all about the hemi section of the head and neck hope you have liked the video if you have liked the video then make sure you remain subscribed to our channel and keep on sharing this channel with your friends